Uh, today we are reviewing the newest compilation album from Light in the Attic titled Pacific Breeze 2. First song is uh, Pink Shadow by Bread and Butter. Uh, what would you think? Yeah, so I thought it was a happy start to this album. Mm-hmm. Um, I also like the album name, Pacific Breeze. I'm definitely not biased uh, because I like Pacific Islanders. Um, I thought it had like this unassailable trumpet going in that first song. Uh, it had a vibe in like grooving ba- groove bass. Um, and it just felt like a song I would play while driving on a sunny day. Um, I know I railed against Charlie for saying Party on You like a hundred times. Uh, they didn't say Pink Shadow nearly a hundred times. I think they said it maybe like ten times, but I didn't mind it in this case. Hmm. Uh, and so I thought it was, a, it was a solid start to the album. I digged it. Yeah, I agree. It's, a, it's pretty tropical, uh, as like most of the tracks on here are. Um, I did like the slow burning groove on here. I think like the the kind of little jazz embellishments were pretty good. I really like the the hook too, with all like the backing vocals sounding like it was a kind of like a gospel is uh, pretty great. I agree. It's a it's a great uh, opening track. Moving on is God. I hope I can pronounce this. Ubiriki by Aichi Otaki. Um. So this song was a little interesting because I feel like on paper it doesn't sound like a song that I'd really like. Um, like if I wrote it out on paper, like there's a flute intro, there are like these um, these female backing vocals, like some sound that I feel like I've heard in Steely Dan songs. Um, and then this sample, this vocal sample, like if you if you drink a really hot soda, or <laughs> really hot soda, <laughs> if you drink like a really cool soda and you finish it and you're like, ah, there's like a bunch of that. So it was like all these things that I thought wouldn't work together, but I, I worked well enough for me. Um, yeah, it was just it felt a little different from the first song, um, but I, I still enjoyed it. Um, I thought it worked. Yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, it has like this uh, oriental instrumental or like a woodwind of some kind. Um, it is pretty steadily paced, so like there's nothing like too high end on the sound front. But I really like the laid back vocals quite a lot. <laughs> I think it's a pretty nice like backdrop track. I can I can probably just put it on and just kind of vibe with it. I agree. Mm -hmm. Uh, next one is uh, Vibration by Kimiko Kasai it's gonna be a struggle the whole album dude some of those songs legit were just straight like kanji characters Mm -hmm. and I was like (laughs) there's no way I'm gonna pronounce this Mm -hmm. also it is kanji right kanji are the characters like Japanese characters right I believe so I'm not not entirely sure okay alright 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 um (laughs) <laughs> that'll come back to bite me in the ass like 30 years from now mm. uh, <laughs> yeah uh, we're on vibration now right the third one yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, this one is like a funky like a funky love song mm. um, yeah dude I would definitely play this song to like win over some cute Japanese exchange student in one of my classes uh, <laughs> it felt like a drawn out um or it felt a little drawn out, kind of like near the end. Um, but overall, I, I liked like the female vocals, um, especially like she hit these high notes near the end that I really enjoyed. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, this is kind of what I was waiting to hear on the album. Um, I like the mix of like Showtime jazz and like lounge pop. Um, I love when the horns take in or take over during the mix or in the mix, like uh, it's set in a cabaret or some sort, something like that. And uh, the sax solo, I think, like, two minutes in is pretty great, too. Uh, yeah, I agree. What's a cabaret? It's like a Japanese, like, girls club, like a gentleman's club, but not like not like a strip club, but more like a talk. Talk easily. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, next one. Holy shit. Kendaichi Kosuke No Theme uh, by the Mystery Kendaichi Band. Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, dude, this one was a bop. They're going like do 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 do, and the piano is going do 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 do. Um, it felt like a theme song. Um, yeah, like this guitar came in with this riff. There was like this trumpet that would answer the guitar. Um, it also had this twangy sound going that I really vibed with. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. A little bit of that action. Um, so again, yeah, I, I like this one too. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. It does sound like the opening theme for like maybe like a retro cop drama, like something like that. Yeah, it has like right. all the makings for it. There were like screeching sounds at the beginning, right? You remember that, like a tire, like it's a car chase almost, yeah, yeah, or yeah. like yeah, it starts off like okay. that. That's that's where yeah. I got the uh, the idea from. Uh, but it, it all it has all the makings for like a retro cop's like 
opening theme because uh, like the female vocalizations are kind of like singing the, along with the rhythm of the track. There's like a very <laughs> liquidy groove, the, some interesting horn hits, and like the undertone or the string undertone passages are pretty nice too. And it has like this very sun drenched feeling to it. Yeah, yeah, I thought <clears> it was good. That was really good. So is the album a bunch of Japanese city pop that this group has taken and then re um, like recut? remastered so like these are like remastered, ra- these are like rarities that you would have never heard unless like this mm-hmm. group, yeah. Mm-hmm. okay so like so then i'm curious was this song ever used for like some cop show or did they just in their remastering make it almost sound like it could be for a cop show because like i agree uh, that it could be used for some retro cop drama. i have no idea these songs are like 30 almost 40 years old from what i know so mm, i'm not mm. really sure how they were used but mm. uh, they're good songs man Alrighty, uh the next one is hadari mune no saiza by tetsuji hayashi oh baby dude um as soon as this one came on i was like okay all right like I, you know i, I kind of liked where the album was going already i kind of would be fine if most of the songs were like the first couple ones we listened to mm. But it was definitely this song where it was just it just was straight into the 80s um it was like dream pop like synth with these drums kind of going um uh, yeah i was just really feeling this one um more than i think any of the other songs that we listened to on the track or on the album thus far mm-hmm. um i also really liked the guy's vocals like backed by um i think like a bunch of women um it sounded really good it was definitely like a night vibe and there was like this little electro solo. I don't know what instrument it was or what exactly it was, but um, yeah, like this little electric solo right in the middle, and then I think close to the end. Um, yeah, I think again, just like I, I like the songs before this one, but I think this was like a turning point in the album for me, where I'm like, okay, like here's a song that I I do really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Here's how I would summarize my thoughts. Yes 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 um this is like definitely my favorite on the compilation i love like the new way yeah. new disco sound um right, i love right. like the sharp keyboards around the main chorus it sounds godly uh the vocals are extremely charming and it's just a it's a really fun song to listen to so moving on to there uh last summer whisper by Henri or Henri. i just said the same thing <laughs> yeah um so I actually also really like this one too, but for different reasons than the last one. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, it's Last Summer Whisper, right? Yeah. I thought it was a really good title because it it felt like a lullaby, honestly. Like it was something that I actually, I think I did close my eyes and just like lie back in my seat and mm-hmm. try to fall asleep almost. Yeah. It had like this sensual start. Um, the bass was just kind of purring and it had this dreamy piano sequence. Um, and the lady's voice on this track was just it was soft, but it was really sweet. Mm-hmm. And it was like pretty much exactly how I'd want like a hot um, summer night under the stars in some field with like a cute girl to go. It was just, it was, it was really nice. I would definitely listen to this again in a hot summer field with a hot girl. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I agree. It's a, it's another like very pretty, sobrene, like lounge jazz track. There's nothing like abrasive or challenging in a way. So I do agree with you. It's, it's kind of like a lullaby. Um, it does have like this nice orchestral tinge to it to give it that like thematic feeling. Um, I also really, I also really like the uh, the vocals as well. They're very uh, very affirming, very kind of warm in a way. So I agree with you. Uh, next one is "Blind Curve" by Momoko Kikuchi. Also, uh, just before we go to the next song, I I forgot to mention that I brought back the uh, the hieroglyphs You're for this this review. Incredible. <laughs> Yeah, truly. Um, no, you really, you don't need to tell me. I know. Uh, actually, no, please tell me. I need to be reminded consistently, actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, on, on the last song, also, like, it's just, uh, like, I, I obviously I didn't know what they were saying. Like, the lyrics weren't in English, but it was the first song where I was like, like wow. Damn, when she said <laughs> kanji or whatever, like, insert the lyrics. Damn, I felt that, bro. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I really felt something on that track, and, and I really liked it a lot. Um, it was like the fluttering instrumentals, this soothing, fantastical sound, and then her voice was just... Uh, but yeah, we're on to Blind Curve now. Yeah, that's the one we were just on. Just Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to add that to the number six track, but moving on to Blind Curve. Um, wait, wait, wait. Were we... 
Okay. Hold on, hold on. We're we're on blind curve. Your we're thoughts. On blind curve now, right? Mine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, let me see. Let me let me decipher what I've got down here. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, okay. So this one, um, I like the female vocals on this one, and it still kind of had that '80s vibe that we mentioned, kind of a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. So it felt kind of like a blend of the last, not a blend of the last two songs, but it felt like aspects of the last two songs that I enjoyed put together. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it was at the song that I, you know, forgave Weeaboos, and <laughs> I realized that anime was okay by me. Yeah. Um, yeah, it had these, like, bright piano chords um, and these drums that just, like, wouldn't give up and um, this pretty cool synth. Um, yeah, and I thought it was a strong song all the way through the finish. Um, so, yeah, I'm for it. Yeah, I agree. I'm pro Blind Curve. Yeah, I agree. I think coming off of the previous track, this is more of, like, a slow disco-y jam. Um, I did. I, I agree with you. I, I like the versatility of the piano on the track. Sometimes it's like an embellishment in the background, uh, and then the other times it's like a giant like hit during the uh, during the chorus, which I really like. Um, the instrumental is like very dazzling in a way, and uh, the focal rhythmic element in the chorus is actually pretty great as well. Um, yeah, it's another splendid track for me. It kind of sounds like one of the songs I would hear from like a, a Yakuza Zero karaoke challenge or something. So I thought it was great. Okay, next one is I'm in Love by uh, Tomoko Aran. So this one, I listened to a song that was released like three years ago. I don't think it was the right one Mm -hmm. because on the album that I was listening to on YouTube, this was like copyrighted or something. Uh So I I might have listened to a different one than you did. Like the lyrics on this song were in English. Was that what it was for you too, or no? No, not, not this one. Okay. Oh, well, it's like All it's right. kind of bilingual. It has like Japanese verses and an English. Oh, course. okay. Yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, no, this this might have been bilingual too. Okay, if we didn't listen to the same one, that's it's whatever. But uh, let me see what I got for this one. Like, was there like a really hardcore, not super hardcore, but like a rocking guitar solo, like in the middle, or not a not a solo, but just no, not really. Uh, it was kind of. Not like prominent uh, or anything, but it was it was there. Uh, actually, no, 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 no. There's is there a point in the song where the guitar just like goes absolutely wild? I, I was incorrect. There definitely is a wild guitar solo. No, not not at all. So I yeah. Okay. So it, it's fine. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll yeah. Skip it. Yeah. Yeah. For me, uh, it's another incredible high point on the record. It has like this nice slow burn, which is like euphoric as hell. Uh, when the hook mm. comes in, I am like absolutely starstruck because it just makes me want to sing along and gives me like a pretty intri- or a pretty like unique feeling. Uh, when she says "I'm in love," I'm like, yeah, I felt that. <laughs> like it's really, <laughs> really catchy to listen to. It's really soulful mm-hmm. in a way. Okay, next one is. Would you if, wait? Uh, if you find that song, could you send it to me? Because I actually want to listen to the one you listen to. Yeah. The one I listened to was pretty good too. I, I don't know what it was, but. Uh, Maybe it was like the original that they cut or whatever, or not that they cut, but that they remastered before they remastered it or whatever. But I don't know. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you afterwards. Um, next one is Kendaichi Kosuke Nishi Iku by Yu Imai. Um, so this one for me felt like a little sonically different from uh, a bunch of the songs that we listened to or from listened to before. Yeah. Um, it was like felt like electro like oriental i i don't know how to describe it um it had like this triangle pop um with these it felt almost like spacier electronic sounds as opposed to like a dreamlike sound mm-hmm. um oh there was also like this i don't know what it was maybe an electro violin or like uh, and and a regular violin um like if I had to describe it, it's like uh, if there was this space shark that was chasing me briefly off the coast of Japan. Uh, yeah, it was definitely it was interesting. I think um, I think I'd have to listen to it again to kind of um, really figure out how I feel about it. But I remember this one being quite quite unique. Yeah, I, for I agree. Me at least I agree. It's like a it's a massive change of pace. Uh, this is more of like a methodical instrumental track. Um, there's like a slow bass groove. Uh, I think there's I think the electronic orient or orientation you're mentioning is like some of the the modular synth undertones and there's like a small mix of like jazz and orchestral segments like on other songs but uh for me I kind of zone out 
uh, of the track every time uh, after the like the first minute mark uh, there really isn't anything unique or attention grabbing about it. it it's like for me it's all right it's not bad it's just not something i'd be like oh yeah i love this one or something it's like it's all right okay next one is tokyo taste by the sadistics what do you think of this one yeah so this one was a little strange too did it have like a sudden end for you or no uh no it did not like they were in the middle of so, like so for me when i was listening to it they were in the middle of saying something or they just finished saying something and it ended like two seconds after so i don't know maybe the album i listened to on youtube was cut off did you listen to it on youtube or like elsewhere no i'll I, mm. yeah okay damn i'll have to maybe i should just use whatever you use then instead of youtube because i might bump into this problem a lot especially with like the lesser known albums or whatever okay. um yeah, I, I thought this this song was like okay. Um, I think it was the first song that I heard where it was a man and a woman singing together. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was fun. I didn't really have too much to say about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Here we have like a bilingual track between like English. It's pre predominantly English, which is uh, pretty surprising considering the context of uh, this compilation. Uh, it is pretty low key. Like, like it's not really anything different from what we've heard instrumentally. But uh, I swear, the vocalist on this uh, track, dead ass, sounds like David Bowie. Uh, and uh, honestly, it it does have like that aura of a, of a of a Bowie track because of how explorative Bowie's music was. So for some reason, I like mm. connected it with that. Um, mm. Yeah, I, That's I high I, praise. Yeah, I, I like it quite a lot. Yeah, don't tell Ian. Don't tell Ian. I liked it quite yeah. a lot. Okay. <laughs> Uh, moving on is Hot Sand by The Piper. Uh, I'll kick off this one. Uh, this is like another pure instrumental track. This one has like that 70s, 80s feel to it uh, more than others. I like the whistling melodies, the kind of exhuming chords, and the overall direction and vibe of the uh, of the track is pretty chill. Uh, it's a it's a pretty good like background track. Again, I, I, I would definitely listen to this if I just kind of want, wanted something to uh, unwind to or just something while I'm doing anything. So, yeah, I like it. That was good. Yeah, I think I could have used a Gunna and Travis Scott feature, to be honest. Yeah, um, dude, where's my Playboy Cardi verse? <laughs> oh. Yeah, there's like, uh, I mean, like you said, there were no lyrics on this one. Um, I noticed the drums the most on this uh, this track. Mm -hmm. um, there was also like this weird dripping sound, or either a dripping sound or like these drippy drums. I, I don't know how to really describe it other than that. Mm -hmm. Um, just like a cool guitar, um, and there was like some applause. Oh no, no, it wasn't applause. I thought it was applause, but it was like I, I don't know what instrument they used. It was some electronic sample or whatever that almost sounded like light roaring or like light applause, or not light applause, but like a crowd. Um, and it it was only until the end, or it was only at the end when they faded out that I realized it wasn't actually applause. Okay, cool. Uh, moving on is uh, the next track is Rainy Saturday Coffee Break by Junko Hohashi and Minoya Central Station. You want me to go first? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, word, word, word. Um, yeah, this was another uh, more relaxed track. Um, I thought this one had the best female vocals, actually. Um, there's also a, just a beautiful violin. Um, it was it was just very sonically pleasing just for me um like and it, it it's funny it felt kind of like dynamic like the song developed over the course of it um but i still felt that it was consistently good even as it developed and even when it started um i, I don't think i mentioned it but there was also again like a nice guitar on this piece um so yeah i, I like this one this is like one i would definitely listen to again um not even just by myself or as background music i think i would put this on in the car like with some friends or whatever cool uh, yeah, I uh, I love this one. This kind of has like a Persona 4 feel to it, which might sound stupid because this song was like made 30-ish years ago. But like uh, <laughs> the wintry sense of love and longing on this track is so magical, dude. Like uh, the semi-acid jazz sound you were talking about, the the string undertones are uh, are pretty uh, unique and thematic. And the absolutely adorable like vocals and chorus are just they're so good. It makes me want to believe in love. Uh, yeah. definitely one of my, wait, one of my favorite. Yeah. Wait, wait, yeah, that's actually, wait, you made me realize that, like, my two favorite tracks on this album make me believe in love, and that might be why I, uh, 
I actually love these these ones in particular. Yeah, yeah. Rainy, uh, sorry, rainy Saturday I, I coffee. Do, yeah. Rainy Saturday coffee break is god tier. I love this track. Yeah, ten out of ten. Give it a listen. Uh, next track. Next track is a uh, Skyfire by Ariono. What do you think? All right. So this this one, uh, this one banger. Uh, it had like these confident instrumentals. Um, uh, like also, apparently the song itself was five minutes long, but I couldn't tell. Mm-hmm. Um, so okay. So at first, like when it starts, she's like just the female vocalist is just like rainbow away, rainbow away, whatever. And I'm like, oh yeah okay like i think that's like a, a map from like mario or something like mario card but <laughs> rainbow like, road. okay cool rainbow road yeah, yeah yeah but uh then it just turned into like these awesome i it, it wasn't like abba but it, it kind of reminded me of just like it wasn't even harmonies it was just a bunch of like women singing together um i, I don't really know how to describe it I, I just other than banger it was it was a good one um i don't even remember what their lyrics were but uh, it definitely wasn't Rainbow Road a hundred times, which I'm thankful for, or Rainbow Way a hundred times, rather. Yeah, I uh, I gotta agree with you. Uh, this is like some cosmic funk. I think like a lot of the analog tidbits uh, along the main synth line are, are a nice touch. Like we're being uh, taken on a trip around like a, a Technicolor constellation. Um, I do agree with you. It sounds like ABBA meets Yellow Magic Orchestra uh, with like the group the group chorus and like the vocal cadences. It's just so reminiscent but it doesn't feel like they're ripping off abba it sounds very, very yeah, yeah 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 uh, yeah. Right. yeah yeah that's why i hesitate to even say abba because it's it's not exactly yeah they're not ripping it's just it's uh, yeah very similar sound yeah i think yeah this is another uh, amazing track for me definitely enjoyed this one okay next one is a uh, can poo by yumi murata <laughs> Uh, yeah dude the guitar riffs on this song they really went hard uh, like midway through and I was for it um, and that twang sound there was this twang sound that sounded like a jaguar roaring um, I don't think I like this one as much as the last two songs but those are big shoes to fill um, I, I thought it, it did well enough um, there was also like this trumpet going and some high vocals um, that the woman on the track hit. Um, so yeah, you know, again, not as good as, as the last two, I think, but but still, you know, good enough. Yeah, I agree. I, I wish I liked this more, but like both times that I listened to it, I thought it was like all right. It's not bad by any means. I do appreciate it, but like at this point of the album, uh, already heard all the other songs with much more spunk, personality, and character. It was just lackluster in comparison for me. It's kind of like stripped back and bare. Uh, yeah, it's all right. Not bad. Uh, next one is holy shit, Karumi Futo by Kyoko Furuya. For Ruya. It just it just gets it just gets worse and worse for you. No, that's not like, bad. I think the, the challenge. Yeah. I know the challenge just increases like that. There's so many vowels, dude. Vowels. <laughs> <laughs> Where are your consonants? <laughs> um, yeah, so I think this song even more than the last one fell into the trap that I was just talking about earlier where I just like liked other songs more mm-hmm. um, that's actually all that I wrote for this song I, I just liked other songs more and I don't really have much else to say about this one yeah I agree I, I, I actually you know I, I might be doing it a disservice too because my phone was on like 1% so I was worried about it dying on me which it did I, I did end up getting a charger to listen to the last song but yeah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. Again, it's not it's not like bad. I, I like the like the raw drum sounds on here, like, poof, poof, poof. but like uh, in comparison, it just doesn't do anything distinct or interesting enough to win me over. It, it's kind of like the last track. It's, it's just it's serviceable. It's not something I would be like, yeah, I'm gonna go back and listen to this because I really enjoyed it. It's like, mm, it's alright, I guess. I guess. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. The last one, uh, base base slash sky province town, uh, nineteen seventy seven by Yuji Toriyama. Dude, say it once, say it again, say it three times, baby. This was uh, a solid ending, or no, a more than solid. I would say, dare I say, a great ending to this album. Um, I don't think there were any vocals on this one. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was just instrumentals. Um, there was a peaceful guitar, this soft piano, and it was just very, it was acoustically soothing. Mm-hmm. 
it felt like near the end, um, like I was just in this surreal soundscape that I didn't really want to leave. Um, like this woodwind, I swear it was a woodwind, came in like midway through, and that was where I was like, all right, I like, closed my eyes and just enjoy it. Um, yeah, I, and honestly, the song, it, it actually, it did raise the overall rating of the album for me. Um, it made me think think better of it just because it, it just kind of left me with this sweet, um, sweet longing, I think, for for the album um after i finished it i was just like yeah that you know uh, i want to listen to it again like that was that was good and i want more yeah uh listening to the song made me realize just how much influence songs like these have on have an effect on uh current genres like vaporwave and future funk because holy moly this is like another instrumental track but it's nowhere near as like kind of uh average in in a way like it, but the thing is, this song doesn't really have like a clear rhythm or a clear groove that's immediately discernible. There's so many small touches in the production, yeah. like the ways the keys bleed into the bass, the uh, the Oriental samples, the little uh, progressions, all these like small things avalanche into like an incredible feeling of like being at peace or like being free. It was it was so good. Yeah. <clears throat> Alrighty, so that brings us to our overall in reading. So you want to go, or you, you want me to go? Yeah, I can go first. Um, so I think for me, I think this. Oof. You know what? I, I need a bit more time to think about it. You, you go ahead. Actually, <laughs> okay. Uh, for me, uh, I really enjoyed the last, or including this album, the last three Light in the Attic compilation albums. Uh, the first one was like an ambient collection of Japanese artists back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, the first Pacific Breeze kind of has more songs like this. Uh, I wasn't that one over by that one, but uh, this one I felt like, even though these are just compilations, there's not really a designed flow or how these songs bleed into each other since they're all made by different people. Um, I did feel like there was more consistency on this record. Um, a lot of the city pop that we hear in like vaporwave and future funk and just the overall influence that sounds like these have on current uh on current like uh artists and genres is impressive like i hear this stuff in in video games i hear this stuff in like meme videos it's, it's incredible how much of an influence it has so i think hearing uh how it kind of all originated not 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 like you know i'm going back just to see oh who, who's the first artist that made this but kind of hearing just how much life this sound had back then um, and hearing it now really makes me appreciate that we have music like this. I think um, all of the songs are really consistent, so it can sound a bit samey at times. But I mean, that's not the focal point of the album. It's a compilation of just how many artists like had their own unique touches to this sound. So if I had to rate it, I'd probably give it like an eight and a half. I thought it was really good. I think the three songs I wasn't that all into was just because they were just nowhere near as explorative or like. Uh, personable like the other 13 are but uh, yeah overall it's a great record highly recommend yeah I think for me it was if I had to give it an overall rating um, I'll bump it up from a 19 to like a 19 and a half out of 30 um, I think you made like several points that I agreed with like one was that a couple of the songs that, again that I did or like you said that I didn't really like were just it's not that they were bad like you said it was just that they weren't nearly as good as some of the other tracks that i heard on the album yeah um i do agree that i feel like at, at certain times especially on the tracks that i didn't like as much the album sort of feels samey um but i think you addressed that as well um but i will say i think the highs on this album for me just they're they're very high highs they're highs that i'd want to come back to and I like the way that it ended and the way that it started. Mm. Um, and even though it didn't really have a, you know, it wasn't like one of those coherent albums that has a theme or whatever, that, like you said, it, it wasn't really the point of the album. Um, so I think for what it was, I, I definitely appreciated it. Um, but I, I don't think it was like, it would be necessarily a full album that I listened to like the whole thing again. Yeah. I think it would be, I come back and, and listen to just my favorite ones from it. Um, but I think that's good enough. Like, um, for me. So, yeah, it, it was enjoyable. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it really felt like a celebration of the sound, and I can't wait to see what uh, what other rarities Light in the Attic pulls out for their next record. For right. sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you made it to this far in the review, uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.